What's going on guys? Round 25 predictions about to go down, but before we do, we have a little bit of news tonight, man. TPJ, Davida Pangai Jr. quitting NRL, putting down the boots, picking up the gloves. Um, gonna get in the boxing apparently, god damn. And um, Payne Haas re-signs with the Broncos. Now, this is, we'll talk about this for two seconds, we'll get into the predictions in a minute, but I was a little... Um, I thought I was onto something. So when I, I, I saw the Tavita Pangai thing first, right? And I thought, ooh, I reckon he's been given the nudge so they can try and get pain, free up some cap space, blah, blah, blah. And then two seconds later, pain resigned. So I was like, oh, well, cool, man. Thought you were smart for a second. Clearly not. But hey, but um, just on Tavita quickly. Look, man, I, I think it's probably good for him. Like, at the end of the day, it, and it makes so much sense now, he was clearly playing like a player who was there for a paycheck. He, you could tell there wasn't a huge amount of care there. Like, no one throws offloads up willy-nilly for no reason. It, it's just, it's so obviously stupid, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, to be honest, man, I know he's only 27, but I, I, it's hard, man. It, it, it's it's tough wanting to, uh, having to get up all the time. Do I mean, you know, but what people don't realise is, I remember him, I played sport till I was 18, and, Man, you don't re people don't realise you've already been playing sport for 12, 13 years. Uh, you, by the time you're 18, 19, 20 sort of thing, your parents are usually pushing you in all the early mornings, all the late finishes, all that training, all that stuff. And it's honestly one of the things I admire most about athletes is like the, the want and the hunger to still want to do it. It's just, I mean, look, the, how long LeBron James wakes up at 39 years old and still wants to put him work at five in the morning on basketball blows my mind, man. It's um, absolutely crazy. And Man, I'm in my early 30s and I, I barely want to get up before lunch. My job's easier than what these guys do. God damn, it's crazy. So, look, man, boxing, it's risky. I mean, you can make 750k a fight, have a few years, so there's more money in it. But it can also go sideways very quickly too. And uh, let's hope he's a little bit more disciplined in the ring because if you're not disciplined in the ring, you go to sleep. It's not like rugby league where it's just an error. You go to sleep, son, especially when you're fighting heavyweights. God damn, but... Um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see how well TPJ goes in the in the ring, eh? Now, Payne Haas resigns as well on three point. I heard six million, one point two a year for the next three years. Now, technically, he's only really signed for two more because he was already contracted for next year anyway. So that'll bring him to the end of twenty twenty six, I believe. Um, at one point two, let me know what you think about this one too, guys. Um, I mean, look. <sighs> It's one of those ones that's like, oh, I don't like that much really being spent on a front row. I think Melbourne and, um, you know, other successful teams have sort of shown that investing in your spine heavily is uh, the way to go. But it's it's one of these ones, right? Like, I live in Hawthorne in Brisbane. Is a three-bedroom brick house in Brisbane, in Hawthorne, worth 1.2 million bucks? Probably not, but if you want it, you, there's what you pay. You know what I'm saying? It's just sort of one of those ones. And look, at the end of the day, what the good, really good thing about pain is he's durable. He puts in the work. You get big minutes. At the end, of, you're going to get your money's worth. I mean, I reckon, I'm guessing here, but I'd, I'd dare say Payne's missed less than 10 games in his whole career, um, you know, in, in the front row sort of thing. I mean, last year he played through AC injuries, all this sort of stuff. So, you know, like, I, I think it's a pretty damn good deal and good on Payne for getting the bag, good on the Broncos for re-signing him. They can now put this all to bed and go to work and try and get that premiership, eh? Hey, good old Broncos, locking it in. So really good for Bronx, really good for Payne and his family. So congratulations to them both. Now, let's get to the games. Let's get to the games. Now, I'm not going to lie, this round... I was a little disappointed. I think there's two good games. The rest are a bit meh. But having said that, I'm pretty keen to see how they play out because form leading into the finals is important, man. Pretty much the last eight games leading up to the finals is a, a really good indicator of how teams are going to go in the actual finals. And uh, we're seeing some. Uh, we're seeing the cream float to the top. It's for damn sure, man. And um, some of the dregs are floating to the bottom real quick. Now, this is probably game of the round. Cowboys, Sharks, this is going to have a real semi-final feel to it, and I can't wait for this game, man. Oh, my God, that's going to be good. Come on, cut it out. Cowboys need to win this to make the eight. Sharkies, obviously, you know, possibly sneaking that top four at least, stay around fifth so they have a home final. Um... 
Warriors versus the Seagulls, I mean, Seagulls are pretty good last week. Warriors, I mean, I wouldn't say they're down, but you know, that didn't look like super scintillating, so the last couple of weeks, but a um, bunch of players back, so that, that should be pretty damn good too. Eels, Roosters, another one, either team's gone, officially, I mean, mathematically completely gone. I don't think either team will make it anyway, but um, technically still alive if they win. Um, then we have the Tigers versus the Dolphins, and then we have Titans versus the Panthers, and then we have the Dragons versus the Storm, and then we have another cracker. So a bit of rubbish in here, and then we got another cracker. We got the Knights versus the Bunnies, and this could be for a top eight spot. God damn. God damn. And then we have the Raiders versus the Bulldogs and the Broncos kicking back with their feet up, watching everyone else beat each other up while they just sit around. I don't know what they do in their spare time now. Who knows? But... Good on your Broncos, you've done it. Pretty guaranteed top two now, home final, some call, bring it on. Let's have a quick look at the um, the ladder. All right, so Broncos and Penrith are obviously in a two two man struggle for the minor premiership, and I think this is roughly how the top four is going to finish. Um, but yeah, we've got a uh, you know Knights and this really good thing for the Cowboys this weekend if they can get a dub. If they lose, it doesn't matter. But one of these teams is going to lose this weekend. So um, they're going to jump one of these teams this weekend, which is um, pretty damn good for them. So it's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. And obviously, we've got Roosters and Eels here. So um, I guess technically, Eels could jump up. If the Eels win, or Eels and Roosters, well, Roosters have a terrible form against. But if Eels win and say Cowboys and Rabbits lose, Jeez, they'll be back in the eight, would they? No, no, rabbits have better for and against. Yeah, it'd have to be a hiding. But yeah, it's, uh, that push back up anyway. So, like I said, it's not not completely out of it yet for the Eels, but not looking good, not looking good. Now, first game. This is an absolute cracker, and I'm really torn on this one. And I think the bookies have this one a little wrong um, as far as the price goes. Now, not because... Think the Cowboys are rubbish or anything. I think they they had been brilliant, but um, just looking at this, I mean, two two losses on the trot, and then a bit of form for the Sharkies there. So I really like the change the Sharkies had made, and I, I it, it, I'm so excited to watch the Cowboys play because they had this block of form where it was like they they were dead set playing top four if they're probably maybe one a run below Penrith and Broncos but they were probably playing like the third best team in the comp and they went on this run and I, I called it I said they're fizzling no, they're not fizzling they're you know like I, I noticed they're definitely flattened out against Seagulls they flattened way out against this uh, Parramatta was still good enough to get it done and then they went loss loss like I said so that buy came at the best time for them kick back relax and I hope I'm praying that they actually um, got some rest and they won't work too hard. Um, you know, like the the forms, the forms there. They got the players there. They got everything there. There's no reason to flog these guys because they're gonna need if they they're gonna make the finals. They need they need energy, and if they want to do well in the finals, they need a lot of energy. So, flatlining the guys and making them do hill sprints in there on on a few days off and all that sort of stuff. Full heaps of contact work would. Probably pretty detrimental, but man, look at some of these matchups. I mean, I love Connor Tracy, huge fan. Drinky, oh, I can watch that dude play every day of the week for real. Kyle Feltz back in the team. Now, I think he's pretty ass, but man, he's good for a highlight, man. Um, but yeah, Katoa, I reckon definitely could see a try either here. And then Tulangi, much prefer him on the wing. He looked actually pretty good in offense, but he got sizzled last time in defense, so... Ramian could be another try. There's try scorers everywhere. Yeah, this could be a try scoring fest for real. Um, so Ra oh, Ramian's probably if he's got a good price on a try scorer, he's um, probably pretty good. Probably pretty good odds. I mean, he's probably a pretty good bet. And then we have Hiku on Talakai. Uh, um, Talakai could um, could barbecue him as well. Hiku can have a real bad when Hiku has a bad night. It's a horrendous night. Then we have Velame versus Mortalo. God damn, Trindle on Deard and Townsend on Hines. Stop it. Ueli on Tama Lolo. Nakora on Lee. Oh, this is a cracker game. And look at that, guys. Nanai is back. Um, absolutely love that. Um, I actually sort of prefer Cotter in the lock position as well. Um, just because he's so small. But I, I actually like him as prop coming off the bench. So let the big boys knock it all out. Then he comes on as a prop. 
and his leg speed, leg drive is just absolutely nuts. So um, he causes damage when he does that. And then, um, I mean, the benches, are, it's a bit of a tough one matchup-wise. I mean, Granville and Moylan probably counts, probably pretty even, you know. Hess, probably, you know, Hazleton, pretty similar matchup. Hunt and Griffin Neem, you know, it's, it's actually a pretty even bench too. It's... This is a game, man. This is a game, and I cannot wait for this, man. God damn. Now, there was, I saw in the match insights on sports, but Cronulla have won nine of their last ten against North Queensland. That blew my mind a little bit. Um, I believe North Queensland got them in the semi last year, was it? September 10th, so that would have been the semi, right? Um, and they only got them by two points, and then um, this year, obviously, Sharky's torched them. Um yeah, it's a little bit bizarre, that one. I mean, wins this season. They've only one extra win. Isn't that crazy? Fifth versus ninth, one extra win. Um, completion rates. I mean, this this obviously has to come up if Sharkies want to do damage in the finals. And then tackle efficiency obviously needs to be up a little bit from the Cowboys as well. I mean, and then both defences are pretty flimsy and Sharkies seem to be slightly better at attacking. Oh, man, this is tough. This is a tough tough game now let's see how sharkies have been traveling this year so sharkies um, away form is they've won six and lost four that's pretty good and cowboys home form is damn good as well now if this was in shark park i would definitely be going sharkies because cowboys have only won three games away from home and there's a very good chance they are on a skid i'm not saying they are but they could be um, they really could be. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is tough, man. This is tough. I think Cowboys are a much better team at home, um, sort of thing. So it is at night. It's not a day game. This is tough, man. Absolutely tough. I wonder what the line is for Sharkies. I like. All right, I'm gonna go. Just because I think they might have to bounce back. I'm going to go Cowboys with zero confidence. I would not be even a little bit surprised if Sharkies put it on them, eh? Not even a little bit. Um, Sharkies, to me, looked so much better with Trindle in there. Um, but I'd say the, the the main difference is, out of these teams, it's like they said, there's even matchups everywhere or like sort of, you know, cross matchups. Like, yeah, okay, Dearden's got Trindle's number, but Heinz, he clearly has Townsend's number, you know, and um, stuff like that sort of thing. Um, but the one big difference I see in this team, big difference that swings Cowboys in the favour is this man right here. This dude is so... Damn electric. And someone said it the other day, and I was like, that's what it is. That's what it is. Scott Drinkwater is the best at controlling te at tempo of speed. So, for example, Caelan Ponger and Reese Walsh, right? Because I kept going, how does Drinkwater break the line almost every time he tries? So, for example, I've said this before about Caelan Ponger, and a little bit to Reese Walsh, but not so much. He, he looks a little more dangerous than he actually is. Like, you're like, oh, he's going to break the line, and then he'll sort of get dragged down. Whereas Scotty Drinkwater's got this really deceptive tempo where he's at, like, half speed, and then he's in, like, top speed. And you're like, oh, like, he changes the tempo of his his pace. Or the other way around, he'll, he'll take off and then sort of make someone overcommit, like, pull, pull the handbrake up a little bit or just drop it into second and then turn someone on the inside or whatever. Like, he's the best at control in his tempo of his speed because I kept going, how does he break the line, like, every time? Like, sort of like half line break opportunities, right? I reckon Caelan Ponga probably only breaks the line once out of ten. You know what I mean? Maybe twice, maybe, you know what I mean? And Reese Walsh, again, you know, you sort of see him getting out and gets grabbed and dragged down or whatever, and it's all, sort of a half break. Whereas Drinkwater, I reckon he when he gets a half break, he breaks the line nine times out of ten. It's It's insane. I've never, barely ever seen anyone like it. It's actually insane, and I think that's what it is. It's the tempo and how he he goes from seventy percent speed, ninety percent speed, really quick. Whereas say like Reese Walsh goes from standing start to full speed like that. It's it's different. Like drink, he's not lightning like that, but he'll go from yeah like sixty percent speed to ninety percent speed, and you didn't notice he did it, and you, then his pasture, you know. And so it's it's brilliant to watch, and that's. To me, the only glaring difference in these two teams is maybe the, the class of Scotty Drinkwater. If he has a blinder, Cowboys win.
and uh, these guys can just hold their own, obviously. Um, in really interested to see how Nanai plays as well. They're going to need a big one from him because, um, I mean, I, I, I've said it, you know, I've, I've thought it for a long time, but I didn't say it out loud because I didn't want to sound stupid. But then Cooper Cronk backed me up and said Brian Nakora is the best line runner in the game. And I, I thought that for a minute, but I didn't want to sound dumb. And then, you know, when, when Cooper Cronk backs up what you've been thinking for the last two years, it's okay to say it out loud now. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, we'll go we'll go Cowboys in this one. Um, but yeah, like I said, I would not be remotely surprised if Sharkies go up there and get the dub. See ya. Drinky for a try. Drinky for a try. Now, Waz versus Eagles. Now, it's good to see Charms back. I heard some chat that he might be out for a while with his concussions. I didn't realise he'd had three this year. Um, completely slow. I can't. I remember the last one, obviously, but I, I literally cannot remember the last two. So um, maybe it's just one of those sort of not so bad ones, but... Yeah, so it's good to see him back in. Dallin, I mean, we got... This is going to be tough. Morgan Harper's in. He can leak tries. We've got Ben Trevojevic out. Brad Parker out. Brad Parker is such a good defender. Him and Campbell Graham, I dare say, two at very worst top five defensive centres in the game. Um, Schuster's just been ass cheeks lately. And, um, I mean, I love watching this Vega play, but, uh, I mean... Bunty's the end of the starting lineup. I mean, the, look at the bench difference. I mean, you've got Tavanga, Dylan Walker, Curran, and then you've got a washed up player, Dean Madison, who's an okay utility, a backup halfback, and Bellymore, who <clears throat> is somehow less athletic than every other player in this team. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, Cherry Evans has been playing out of his skin, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this game, but I don't see how. The Warriors lose this one. But to be honest, I don't think the Seagulls have been that bad. Everyone's like, oh man, like Penrith struggled against me. Manly have put on, Manly have had games where they look like they're top, maybe not four, but top six. They've looked, they've had games where they've been absolutely brilliant. I mean, um, but yeah, I mean, look at this, look at this form going from the Warriors. Um, you know, so, I mean, they've been in these games. I mean, they let the Sharkies back into this one. They were in it with the Cowboys. This is when the Cowboys were, you know, I thought they were starting to fade around here. Dragons have actually been better than their record suggests. I mean, Roosters, again, they're probably a little better than their record suggests lately. And then Panthers, obviously, are the Panthers. So I don't think Seagulls have been horrendous or anything like that, but definitely not um, definitely not the Warriors calibre um, sort of thing. And Warriors, again, nice little completion rate there. Seagulls, actually, not not too bad, to be honest. Um, but, yeah, this is, like I said, this is what you want to see. And yeah, when you're getting towards the end of the year, if your if your average point scored is twenty four, so you're getting four tries in a game, average points conceded is eighteen, you're doing pretty good. This is the this is a number you want to see towards the end of the year. You know what I'm saying? That's um, exactly where you want it, and this isn't what you want to see. You don't want to be conceding more points than you're scoring. Uh, that's uh, never a good sign. Um, yeah, and so I, I think the Wars get this one done. Where, where's the game being played? Uh, Daniel Anderson Stadium, Auckland. How good. Up the was top three. God damn. Eels Roosters. Now this, again, this game many people don't really care about unless you are uh, go for <laughs> go for the Eels or the Roosters. Uh, now, I genuinely, that Parramatta bunch of players back. Um, team looks a lot better. I I know BA said, I, I, you know, I still have faith and blah, blah, blah. I genuinely think that he's given up on the finals a few weeks ago. Just the way he's been tinkering with the team, I think I genuinely think they're they're going for next year. I mean, they've still got a damn good rugby league team, um, sort of thing. But just the way they keep tinkering with it, RC comes into six, Dylan Brown at seven with Moses out. Yeah, obviously, Moses is such a huge loss. Um, Andrew Davy out as well, but Sevo back, um, Regan Campbell Gillard back. They're a better team with RCG in it. One of the most underrated props. I know he gets rated, so you can't say he's one of the most underrated. He's played Origin for God's sake, but no one puts him top, you know, top tippy top. And he genuinely, and I actually watched uh, that bloke in the bar, and they said, when it's only Junior Paul on the team, you can target him. When it's RCG and Junior, you can't. And Regan does come off the back paints a bit better. You you almost have to d up Regan more because he he'll punch through the line, whereas Junior will just hit it and spin and offload and stuff like that. So. Um, now this is what I can tell as well. Hopgood's arguably been top five lock this year, and he's been moved. 
um, Joe from Gowie in the lock. So you get what I'm saying. He's tinkering. He's moving things around. He's dropping players that have had spots in this team and putting play. You know, this this to me this screams of let's give this a crack and see how it goes, uh, sort of thing. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, I still like a lot about Parramatta here. Roosters are favourites, are they? Roosters are favourites. Um, I, I mean, Sevo's back. He's he's good for a try or two. Will Penasini on Brandon Smith. I mean, I still like... I, I probably like the back five from uh, the Roosters better. I mean, uh, Dylan Brown's better than both these guys almost combined, but then Arcee's pretty arsy. Um, and then the Fords. I mean, I definitely. I mean, it's it's, it's hard. I'm like, I like, I actually like their full pack, but then I look at this team. I'm like, damn, that's a good Ford. Well, Jared's good, Cheese is good, Collins is good, but they, I don't know. I don't feel like I don't know. Collins seems to be almost one of these guys who's elite at Origin and just very good at the club. And then I don't like this back row whole heap. Victor's been pretty average, but uh, and then the bench. I mean. I don't know. This is a tough game, man. This could go either way. This is it's a it's a bit of an average round of rugby league, but it's it's this is actually a really hard game um, round to pick. It really is. Um, so the play. Oh, so the Roosters got them like this year, March and twenty. This would have been oh yeah, early in the year. That's right. Before we knew the Roosters were cracking, and then last year Eels got them. So Roosters with the better form got. Who would have thunk it? Uh, one extra ring for the Eels this year. Um, I mean, par this this is crazy. Like Parramatta, this number not too long ago, maybe five six weeks ago, Parramatta had I think the second best offense, where their their offense was about twenty seven, and the defense was eighteen or nineteen. And if it's under twenty, it's all right. And it's just come all of a sudden just just can become a terrible, uh, but not as bad as this. <laughs> I mean, and this is what's leading me towards. Para winning is just Roosters just can't seem to score points. I mean, I know they did last week, but I don't know. They just keep getting in each other's way. I, I definitely see points in Para. Um, if the Fools get on top, I, I think I think, and you know what? I'm going to tip Para, and this is why it wasn't. It was more the body language of the Roosters last week, even though they won. I just got the feeling that they have. I know, I know I sort of said I think BA's tinkering for next year but that they had like they made there was, there was a the game was in the balance last week and Victor Valley did the dumbest error I've ever seen and they were just stood around and laughed I was like that's like there was no man you know like ang like it was just terrible like it was it was like they were just out there and obviously they had so much firepower they won anyway and they do have so much firepower but um yeah, I didn't like that at all. And I, I genuinely think Parramatta are, are still trying. So I'm going to go Parramatta in an upset with this one. I think they might um, might get it. But at the same time, they have been pretty damn awful. So Roosters could easily get this one for sure. West Tigers, Dolphins. Oh, Dolphins, look at that casualty ward. It's adding up. I mean, Jesus Christ. Um, and again, I love this team. I know I've been saying it. And um, I've, I saw a few people saying, you know, like, you're, oh, they're the same as last year. I have to do, Sometimes you have to look at the performance. And even though they have, I think they've won the same amount of games as last year, I've actually been pretty impressed with some of their performances. I mean, their ruck speed's lightning quick. It's it's top, tippy-top in the NRL. They, they had a little period there when they were completing well and everything like that. And I actually really like... I love Stefano. Clem has been good. Papa Lee, Bateman. I, I don't mind this team at all. It's just obviously got a lot of polishing to do and this is just completely depleted. So I think the... the I think the Tigers are going to get their fourth win of the year. We we'll lock it in, eh? Lock it in, Eddie. Here we go. I mean, the tackle efficiency is good. Yeah, obviously just struggling to score, but um, Dolphins' defense isn't amazing, so they should be able to get some points. And I think I always say, man, if this adds up to over forty-five, we go over. So I reckon we might get some points. We'll get some points here, eh? We'll go Tigers overs. How yeah, good? Titans, Panthers. Oh, the poor Titans. Oh, this could get ugly, man. This could get ugly. Look at that green. Look at these players coming back. Luai, Mitch, Kenny, Spencer, Lini, Tyro, Peachy. Well, I don't know what's going on with Tago. Every week they say he's going to come back, and he never does. So I'm not too sure. I hope he's okay, because he's probably my favourite centre in the game at the moment. He's a freak. 
Um, I mean, and then we've got Aaron Clark, Foran, and Tanner Boyd out in this one. I've been so impressed with all three of those guys. You know, if you've been following me a while, you know I've been saying I see a bit of cheese in in the Aaron Clark. I think he's he's been pretty good the last five five or so games. Kieran Foran has been brilliant. Tanner Boyd's playing playing way above his pay grade. Um, Big Maui back and AJ Brimson's name, but I don't think he'll play. And so we've got this Keeney guy in. Apparently he's a gun, but I've never seen him play. Um, Sharp. I mean, I mean, Jaden Campbell defense sixty kilos defending the defensive line with what, what Liam Martin running at him. Oof, whether it's I'm not too sure if it's Liam Martin or Sorensen, but either way, good luck, bro. Good luck. And then uh, Tom Weaver in at seven. This could get ugly. I mean, it's still a good pack. You got Moe. You, I've, I've been pretty impressed with this Jolliffe guy. Uh, for feeder, he's been good, but he's been good because Foran's been, make, you know, bringing him in. You know, like he's helping him be good. Um, big Tino in at lock, and then the bench is ill. Um, so Spencerino named, but obviously still in the reserves. What happened to him? Hamstring? Hamstring? We'll have a look. See, knee. Oh, sorry, I did his medial. So it should be all right. Maybe they'll give him an extra week. Um, where are we talking about? But yeah, this could uh, this could get ugly real quick. Real, real quick. Um, I see more of this score on 48 to 12, than uh, actually uh, probably more of a 48 to 4. Probably these two combined. Like I said, Penrith's defense this year has just gone to a new level, conceding 12 points a game with a full complement of players. This is closer to 10 points a game. Um, like they they leaked a few, the the average conceding um, rate went up over Origin and while Clearer is out while they're resting players, um, yeah this could uh, this could get ugly this could get real ugly um, twenty five point like this is substantially better than second place it's pretty damn wild um, and then yeah this could, Titans leak in twenty six a game I yeah, this could uh, if the Ford pack gets on top, the Cleary could absolutely rinse these guys. This could be um, now. How's this work? So Jaden Campbell. So pretty much what I'm going to look for is wherever Jaden Campbell is defending, I'm going to pick the second rower that is against him. Uh, whether it is Sorensen or we're not too sure what side he will defend. I guess I'll have to I'll have to look at that one. But yeah, I'd be looking at Sorensen and Liam Martin for a try for sure. Because, uh, yeah, like, he's not a bad defender. He's just tiny. And, um, Liam Martin and Sorensen are great line runners. So, uh, yeah, that could uh, there could be some tries there, eh? <laughs> there could be some tries there. Um, but, yeah, we'll go uh, Panthers in a trot, 13+. plus. Uh, Dragon Storm. I actually do. I think, I think um, Dragons, similar to the Tigers, have been playing better than their results have sort of showed. Been pretty damn impressed with them. Um, I mean, Pappenhausen not back yet. Jeez, they look pretty similar, eh? He's like the white version of Sloan. Am I tripping? Or do they look real similar? They do. I'm not tripping. Meany. Maybe he's, um, maybe he's Sloan's dad. Got into Meany's mum. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, God damn. Um, all right, so matchups here. I mean, look. I've been pretty impressed with them, to be honest. I think they've showed a bit of ticker. I've actually been pretty impressed with Lomax. I actually, to be honest, man, it was pretty funny. Everyone, I watch these games closely, man, and everyone jerks off Ben Hunt so hard and says everyone in the Dragon sucks. I personally think that like I've watched him, I've watched him kick the ball dead fifteen times in the last five weeks. Like he he kicks the ball dead with terrible kicks so damn often. And he, the thing is, too, he does a handful of good things as well. And it's like the good probably does outweigh the bad. I'm not saying he's terrible or anything like that. But dead said, I think I think if you dropped someone like, or it, let's just say Hunt played at his best, I actually think the, the Dragons probably would have had a few extra wins. Like he, he has literally let the, the pressure valve off so many times. And I, I think it's pretty unfair to the Dragons over the last five weeks. I've, I've kept saying, oh, man, it's just Hunt's so good, but he's in a sucky team. These guys have been drying them. Man, Sully's been brilliant, man. Man, you drop Sully into you know, the Broncos, Melbourne, Penrith. He's, he's scoring tries every damn week. He's a freak. Um, now, I definitely see 
Xavier Coates, and Ravalar has been flimsy on the edge, so I'll be probably chucking Coates in as a anytime try scorer as well. And they've been a little flimsy in the middle, so maybe a maybe even a sneaky Harry Grant too. We'll have a look at the team stats, even though you know who I'm picking. I mean, Jesus, look at these Hardens, damn. And um, even though the Dragons have been good, like I said, I, I have not been impressed with Ben Hunt's. Like his long kicking game's been pretty good, but his short's been awful, man. Like his short's been awful, like. Like, to me, I'm just being real. I don't think, like, people say he's this, is that. I don't think he's been close to, like, Adam Reynolds this year. Like, not even close. Like, to me, there is absolute levels between those two at the moment. You know what I'm saying? And, like, Reynolds' short kicking game, his long kicking game is perfect. And, um, yeah, I just yeah, I, I just don't get the whole thing. But anyway, um, Storm a little patchy, but Jesus, they look good against the Raiders. Um, and Jesus, they look good against the Eels. It's just Penrith just have the wood on them. Um, yeah, it's uh, pretty crazy. But yeah, five wins for the year. Completion rate pretty poor. I mean, tackle efficiency, not too bad. And again, Storm hit that nice little 24 points, <coughs> 18 conceded. That's where we like to see it, or better. Uh, and yeah, Jesus Christ, 20, 24 points scored. Um, yeah, I think we'll be going out. Storm 13 plus. Oh, this is a tough one too, man. This is for a final spot. I'll tell you what I'm struggling with, what I struggled with with this game is, right? So let's look at these team lists. See, I look at this Bunnies team, right? And I see 20 plus on the Knights. But I, I look at the Bunnies team at like they're playing their best, if that makes sense. Like, I look at them and I'm like, man, like, you know, but they're just, they're not even close. Um, not even close. Just a hot tip, guys. I know you're going to want to put Bradman Best in as a try scorer. I'm not saying he won't score, but this guy's just been freak level. He's hands down the best defensive center in the league. He's... I reckon he's close to the best defensive centre I have ever seen. Like it is, like every like even when the bunnies have been struggling, right? It's just it was just crazy. Like I'm sitting there listening to it, the TV up real loud or with my headphones on. So a team will do a shift to Campbell's side, and then you see this crack, and he just boom and grabs him. Like it's not a shot; it's just bang. Like he grabs him and just drags him to the ground. I'm like, ball and all, just no chance of moving. Like he is freaky, and I'm really looking forward to that matchup, man. That should be damn good. Um, Tavita Totola, named but not in the 17. Now, I'm going to sit on the fence with a little bit of this one, all right? So, I, I said Totola, if you've been listening to me since the start of the season, I, I actually said Totola's the most underrated prop in the game, not because he's as good as Moses Leota of Payne Haas, just because he just shores up the middle of the thing. So, if you remember the Bunny season, he started, the Bunny's had a pretty rough start to the season, he, he, I think he literally did his knee in the first game. But it was just a measly or something like that. And they did. They struggled at the start. Then he came back, and they were brilliant again. He he immediately firmed up their middle. He, he never get, he will very rarely gets put on his back. He fast play the balls. He, he, they play off the back of him really well. And he, he's, so, he's so underrated. And then he went out again, and Bunnies fell to water again. And I, I'm telling you, man, he's, he's been a big part. Of, he's a big part of, them, of their success. He really is. Um whatever he's getting paid is not enough, man. He, he's dead set, been brilliant for the Bunnies over the last year or two. And um, now this is where I am. I'm going to have to sit on the fence a little bit with this tip. Now, if Jairo is out with back spasms or anything like that and Totola doesn't play, I can't pick the Bunnies. I'll have to go with the Knights. But if Totola does play... And Jai Arrow is fit and can play. These back spasms aren't hurting him. I'm going the bunnies. Um, I'm going the bunnies just because of strike and all that sort of stuff. And not that, not that Knights are due for a loss. It's just, it's just you know, it is hard to win six, seven, eight, nine, ten games in a row. There's a reason it doesn't happen very often. You have an off night here or there, and bunnies are no slouches for real. And I just. It's like, you know, when a team's running hot into the finals and they're like on an eight-game win streak and you're almost like, oh, I just want them to lose one because it's like, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, I want, I'd love them to lose a game before the finals so they're not on this this streak because you're going to lose. You're going to have an off game eventually. You'd rather have it a little early um, sort of thing. So, 
yeah, I feel like this could be it for the Knights. Um, I'm not saying they will. I've been so impressed with the man, so damn impressed with the man. And if we're just going on straight form, Knights win 20 plus. Like they've been that much better than the Bunnies. It's not funny over this five game period. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I'm sorry I do have to sit on the fence a little bit with this one, guys. But yeah, I, I, if if Totola's not in this team and Jai Arrow's not, I cannot pick them and uh, but if if Totola isn't here I think they've got enough middle Shaq goes back to the bench like Shaq's great but he's not to me he's not a starting big minute prop he's, you know what I mean and then and it just makes their bench so skinny then it's like Shaq is built to come off the bench for a team in the middle like that's he's that's what he's good at um sort of thing so yeah sorry to sit on the fence on that one a little bit guys but um yeah it's just the way I see it I, I just I think so much hinges on their middle being healthy, and it's just they like to me. No offense, they're not winning this game with Shaq Mitchell, and you know, like Cheekham comes in, and they're they're in the middle. They're they're getting pumped. So yeah, sorry, guys. sorry on that one, guys. But yeah, rap rabbits if they if they can get those middles, and if not, I'm going the Knights. Raiders Bulldogs Raiders fans, Croker's in. Bulldogs have been awful. Just about last in every stat. Um, Raiders, if you can't beat these guys 13 plus, I don't know about you playing like you just. We know you're not going to do much in the final sort of thing. So, but, but having said that, I've I've been saying that I, I, I think they can. Turn, sometimes it's just that with this a one win, or just you just find something, you unlock something, and it could be this, it could be this game. I mean, playing a flimsy defense. I mean, you got Liam Knight at prop. Max King's been awful. <coughs> kick out. I mean, kick out's a bit like Dave for feeder. I mean, I knew when they hired, when they, not hired him, when they signed him. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Like kick out is like for feeder had been over the past few years. I've, it, unless you got a foreign or a someone to unlock him, it's you like t- Titans usually just used to pass the Fafita ball ten meters out, and he'd just be triple teamed and get taken down. It's like, oh, cool man, oh, what a waste of a million dollar player. Um, and I saw them; they, 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 they unlocked him real nice one game, once it was just one one play, and then after that they just passed it to him when he was outnumbered and sort of said run. You know what I mean? Like it was like, oh. So, yeah, doggies need to throw a little bit more at him than that. Uh, Luke Thompson was so bad last week. I know he's been off for a year. Tavita Pangai Jr. is there for a paycheck. He's not going to offer much. Uh, yeah, this could... Um, this should get ugly for the for the Bulldogs. But at the same time, Raiders have just not been able to put teams away. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, man, Jackie White, and it's time, man. You've got three... There's three games left. If you do not play to your potential and start killing it, you've got three, maximum four games left for the Raiders, man. Show us something, Jackie. Do something, bro. It's your time. You know, you don't want to end your you don't want to end your Raiders career just, just getting not making the eight or getting bounced out of the finals forty nil by, you know, whoever. It's um it's your time to shine, Jackie. Let's see if you can do it. All right, that's it. That's it, lads. We're done. We bumped through that pretty damn quick. Um, all right, so we're going. Let's have a little break it down again. We're going cows. We're going wires. We're going para. We're going tigers. We're going panthers. We're going storm. We're going fence sitting. <laughs> now we, we like I said, I, I really want to see to that final lineup get for, confirmed for this one. And we're going raiders and broncos. Enjoy your week off. How good. Um, but yeah, like I said, guys, not a ton on. Now let's have a quick look at next week's. So Panthers, let's see if this round's a little better. So this, you know, obviously could be for Parra to make the eight or not. Then we've got another and a bit of a dud game. 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 This could be good. Could be good. Um, dud game. Pretty good game. But damn, that's two pretty dud weekends in a row of footy, man. Round 27. This, I'm praying. I'm praying. Please let this have some some games that are going to make... I'm not looking... I haven't looked at who's playing yet. I sort of know, but... Let there be games that mean something in the last round of the NRL. Please don't let these there be many dead rubbers. Please. 
All right, Bronco Storm, we're off to a good start. Dead rubber. This could be for a final spot. So you would, this, or it could also be a dead rubber, but this 50-50. D -d dead rubber, I guess you could say. I mean, it might not be for the Wiles, but dead rubber, essentially. Here we go. This could be where the Panthers play, uh, so minor premiership or Cowboys play final. So that's pretty important. This, I mean, dead rubber-ish, but this could be for Knights to make the finals. Absolute dead rubber. And then this could be for a home final. So, yeah, okay. So we finished strong, man. We finished strong. That's pretty damn good. But yeah, this weekend, next weekend, man. And then we, we could be finishing with a bang here, man. Oof. How good is that going to be? Ooh, God damn. I love this sport. How good, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you on the next one.